Grow Generation owns a number of retail stores throughout the United States that focus on selling products that allow you to do what's called hydroponic gardening. Basically, hydroponic gardening is gardening without soil. And you might be asking yourself, okay, that's cool and all, but what does this have to do with cannabis? In order to produce consistent cannabis crops, they have to be grown inside. And usually when you're growing something inside, particularly in a greenhouse, now you use hydroponics instead of the traditional soil. Grow Generation knew this from the start, and its main target customer is a cannabis grower. For investors, having a picks and shovels play instead of having direct exposure to cannabis means that Grow Generation is an interesting alternative because you do get exposure to cannabis, but it's not as reliant on the ups and downs of the cost of cannabis and things like that. However, because Grow Generation is directly related to the cannabis sector, that means whenever there's volatility in the sector, there's volatility in Grow Generation stock. And that's what we've seen with cannabis selling off over the last couple of weeks and Grow Generation joining the fray. The safe banking bill will likely not get introduced into Congress this year. With the continuing resolution expiring in November, Congress will be debating the budget and not introducing new legislation. It's important to remember that the cannabis sector is incredibly volatile. Although I do think that the federal government will legalize cannabis on a national level at some point, the question is how many of these companies will not survive that long? Accordingly, for any of the single companies that I invest in, I limit my exposure dramatically. In fact, I'm not risking more on this position than I would risk betting on a March Madness bracket. The long-term potential is there, but I never worry about how much money I can make. I always worry about how much money I could lose. Even though we saw a significant rally in cannabis in August, when the Department of Health and Human Services recommended to the DEA that cannabis be rescheduled from a Schedule 1 narcotic to a Schedule 3, most of these stocks have given it back. In fact, some stocks, like Grow Generation, are now lower than their low from 2022. They've given back the entire rally and even more than that. I added 0.91% to my grow generation allocation on the 19th at $2.30. This is one of those speculative positions that I screwed up. I bought into grow generation at $16.04 on October 30th of 2020 and was able to take significant profits when the cannabis sector saw huge highs in 2021. However, I broke one of my rules of never trusting a bottom and I assumed that grow generation would find a low somewhere around its pandemic bottom. It didn't end up doing that and pulled back significantly lower. Accordingly, I am being very careful adding to this position, as it's very possible that Grow Generation could go bankrupt, and I don't want to lose more than the maximum risk allocation that I've set for this position. My buy lowered my per share cost 4.7% down from $14.90 to $14.20. I will continue to make small buys in this position with my next target at $1.85, and I will waste no time taking profits if it ever gets back up above my cost basis. With my next sell target at $14.60, slightly above my cost basis and slightly below a point of resistance that Grow Generation has seen in the past. 